What's up, JoJo in the morning family? Hope everybody has had a really good week. I hope you really liked this series. I know that I have because I just believe that if you keep pressing into the Lord, you keep pressing on, you keep moving forward, everything is going to work out. In fact, it's going to work out better than you could ever even imagine. This is how it works when you keep rolling with the Lord. One of the biggest problems I see with people is they start on a journey. And for some reason, for some reason, they stop. And when I mentor people like that and they tell me how their life's getting off, I'm like, hey, if God told you to do something, why did you stop? profound stuff like that <laughs> you know we have a we have a mentoring group and I mean majority of people in that mentoring group are absolutely slaying it because they have found the God vision for their life and they're moving in it even if they don't see everything that they're wanting to see they're moving in it and they are making progress according to the will of the kingdom of God over their life. Okay, now I gotta read you some scriptures. It is going to help you. First Thessalonians 5. We'll start with 16. You gotta pay attention to every part of this, okay? It's very strong, it's very good. First Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always. When? Always. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about you, but that's tough. That's tough. Rejoice always. There's a lot of little things in life that could frustrate you. You ever paid somebody to cut your grass and they do a horrible job? <laughs> it's hard to rejoice. Mr. Frost, if you're watching, sir, you do a great job and I want you to know that. Um, you ever ordered something and it, it wasn't what you thought it was? You ever went to your favorite restaurant and you're just coming off of a 10-day fast and they bring your meal and it's all messed up? I mean little petty things, things that you don't want to rejoice. And when warfare comes, rejoice. You, you, you get a bad doctor's report, rejoice, which aren't getting bad doctor's reports. I'm just making examples. You know, rejoice always. Like, Always rejoice. Always, you wake up and you got a sinus headache. Rejoice always. I mean, hey, you're alive, baby. Come on, let's go. Okay, first is on is five sixteen. Rejoice always. Seventeen, pray without ceasing. Now, it is borderline almost impossible, impossible for someone to sin. <laughs> while they're talking to God. So if you want to quit sinning, talk to God. <laughs> Pray without ceasing. That's what prayer is, communicating with God. But when you're in the heart uh, and just the, the rhythm of always talking to God, just you're, you're going to get rid of a lot of fear, doubt, condemnation, insecurities. Fear cannot stay around prayer. Insecurities will flee from prayer. If you're a person that prays constantly, you are not going to struggle with the things. If you keep praying, you're going to build yourself up and you are going to press into the things of God and you will see your victory manifest. Verse 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That goes along with verse 16. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Now listen, listen, listen. The only reason stuff in the Bible says like rejoice always is because it says pray without ceasing because you, you know there's things you're going to need to pray about. And then it says in everything give thanks for there, this is the you know, will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now before I get to the last one, I'm going to tell you about when I wrote my my prayer journal on joy. 
I did a deep study on the word joy. And you know the majority of times in the Bible when the word joy was mentioned, it wasn't like just have the joy of the Lord. No, it, it would talk about in this life you're going to have trials and tribulations, but have the joy of the Lord in the midst of your darkest season of life. Have the joy of the Lord. And so just what the scripture's saying, just rejoice always. Give thanks in everything. Good is going to come out of every situation that you have. Now, verse 19, I love this one. Do not quench the spirit. Now, when people talk about that, do not quench the spirit, they usually are always talking about a church service, okay? True. Do not quench the spirit in church. Most churches ain't got no Holy Spirit to quench. <laughs> okay? But I'm talking to you about your everyday life. You ever been out and about town and you look over and you see that one person in town you cannot stand and the Holy Spirit says, go over there and buy their meal at a restaurant, buy their groceries at a grocery store. They got a shirt in their hand at a, at a TJ Maxx. Go over there and buy. Do you quench the spirit? You've seen somebody that you need to forgive? Do you quench the spirit? Oh, no, no, no. You're at a store and you pull out your wallet. And as you're pulling out your wallet, oh, you got a little more money than you thought you did. And you paid for all your stuff and it's all good. But then you see somebody behind you and you could tell they're not as blessed as you right now, but they're going to be blessed, but they're not as blessed as you. And the Holy Spirit goes, <clears throat> Looks like you got enough money in your wallet to cover that, don't you, big boy? Do you quench the spirit? You ever been in a store and the Holy Spirit and your eyes get fixed on somebody and you can tell they're in pain? Like it could be physical pain. It could be emotional pain. I remember one day I, I saw this guy. He was pushing his buggy real slow. He didn't have much in his buggy. He's pushing real slow. I just... And I saw him a few times in the store, and the Holy Spirit said, he's going through a lot. And so uh, I kind of caught him going around a corner, and I said, hey, sir. Man, I, I just, i seen you in the store a few times, and I said, the Lord spoke to me and just said to come talk to you. And I just want to offer prayer. Now, this dude's a big old dude, okay? He was a big old guy. And... And I'm six foot four, and he was big, he was taller than me, and big old guy, and uh, and he, he just lost his dad, pops lost his pops, man I just lost my pops, and he said my pops was everything man we, you know we hung out we watched ball games together we fished together I mean we were like close, and he said I don't know how to go on with without my pops man, and I'm just like man that, bro that's. That's tough, man. The only thing I can do is pray that the Holy Spirit. And I was very busy that day. But I'm still talking about that story because I didn't quench the Spirit. Okay? When I walked out of that store, I rejoiced that my dad is still alive. My wife's dad is still alive. I really rejoiced that my kid's dad's still alive. And I was praying. I said, Lord, you know, thank you. I pray for that my kids and I have many more memories to make. My dad and I have many more memories and steaks to eat together. And, you know, I, I was just giving thanks to everything because I just walked into a guy that was a huge man and lost it right there in a Walmart. Okay? And so rejoice always. There's something in your life that you take for granted that other people do anything to have. You know, I try to have a heart of gratitude, okay? I try to have a heart of gratitude for everything. I've been to third world nations where they don't have clean drinking water. Man, we got, you know, clean water you know, in the sink 
coming out the fridge whenever I put my glass in, you know, outside. It was just it, it, clean water everywhere. Or I think it's clean. <laughs> but clear, everywhere. When you see a six or seven year old kid drink out of a water puddle, you'll give some thanks to the Lord. Okay? In everything rejoice. Press into God. Listen, when things are going horrible, press into God. But when things are going great, I honestly believe sometimes when things are going really, really good for you, that's when we need to press in even more. Because you got to stay humble. You got to have, God loves gratitude towards him. He loves, how many times does the Bible talk about have a grateful heart, a thankful heart, you know, gratitude, all throughout the Bible. We need to be so thankful for everything in our life. I remember one time I was speaking at a funeral and the person wasn't like young, but they weren't old, you know, and I, the family wanted to speak first and I, I just wanted to make sure I did a, a very good, appropriate job for this family. I didn't have much to say when they got done. They were like, Lord, you know, she left us, we think, a little early. I think she was like um, high 60s, which was young. Most people, you know, you think, you know, 80, 85 or something like that, a little bit older. But, but God, thank you for 68 years. I was like, yeah, that's a good outlook, you know. Like, I think my, my dad's like 82 and my mom's 78. And so they've lived a good long life. And th these people, they lost their mom and grandma at 68. But all they wanted to talk about was how this mighty woman of God lived her life to the fullest, was a beacon of hope, shined her light everywhere she went, sowed financial seed, helped people out, Best mom, best grandma, always at the ball games, always there. She was always the one that did, and they just bragged on her and talked about her. And I was like, wow, most people would be sad. They were very sad, but they rejoiced in the 68 years that they had together. And I was just like, wow, that, that adds a lot of meaning to this scripture and everything give thanks. And, and one of the grandkids is like, you know, 68 was young. You know, we wanted grandma to stick around another 15, 20 years, but at least she didn't pass away at 62 or 65. We had her till 68. And so that may be tough, especially when you're in the, the midst of it, but find ways to give gratitude to God in everything. You know, if you've ever been let go of a job and you feel like it wasn't it wasn't just. He has something else. Like, God, thank you for the time I was there. I know I learned something powerful while I was there, but God, I'm ready for my next. And he'll always bring it to you. He will bring it to you. Okay? So, hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And remember, don't quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Move with the power of the Holy Spirit because he has a whole lot out there for us. Hey, like always, you need prayer, message me, okay? You can message me on Facebook Messenger. You can email me. You can go to the website, jojodawson.net. You know, you can email me through there. And also, I want to thank all of our financial partners and prayer partners. We could not do what we do without you, all right? Love y'all.